we can first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap pod for this week's Travelers Championship. And joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharme is here. Greg, I think we should do one hour for every playoff hole that was played today. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, I wasn't planning on sleeping tonight anyway. <laughs> Clear I know for schedule. you, Rick, that would just take you to bedtime. But I was telling you Jacob happy before. Hour. I was. I told Jacob before we got hot and before you got in. I'm. I, this is really cutting into my happy hour time yeah. here. <laughs> Two and a half hours of extra hey, golf. <laughs> what can you do? I get. You know, it's a good place to. Uh, ha- it's a good thing to have on TV for happy hour. I mean, a, a playoff golf is great for a happy hour. Yeah, I mean, I, I just my my wife, I think, was rotting on the couch. Like, how, how, how is this not over? Yet? Yeah, is this <laughs> gonna end <laughs> ever? Um, all right, I yeah, mean, I got a, we, I got a quick story about please, the wife rotting. I please. gotta share this. My yeah. um, my wife was upstairs, in we had shifted. There's always the whenever these not we don't have like a I don't have an office yet. I'm getting to that point soon. I don't have one yet. So anyway, there's always a shift. Am I going to be upstairs or downstairs? Where yeah. where are the where are uh, my wife and kids going to be? Where am I going to be? So that's why I have these multiple setups. Anyway, um, tonight it's bath time. We shift earlier today. I was upstairs and we shift, so I'm downstairs, and it just keeps going. And I was going to change and change the channel and put something on for uh, my oldest Mac to watch something before while, while uh, mom got Timmy ready for bed. Anyway, she's like, no, don't change, leave the playoff (laughs) on because I want to know when you're going to start. I want to know when this, I need to know when this is over. Cause I have gotten in trouble because I haven't told her when we're done. If I got to do something else after it go. And so she gets locked down every time. So anyway, (laughs) it was pretty funny. (laughs) Leave it on. I need to know when you're done. And it just kept going. And it was probably for like 45 minutes at least, maybe an hour. So that was, that was something else. It, it, this whole day was something else. I mean, we, we could talk about how we got to this position. I'll do it very quickly. Harris English shoots a 65, five under par. Kramer Hickok shoots a 67, three under par. And we get ourselves a two-man playoff, Greg, that lasted not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight holes, the second longest sudden death playoff in PGA Tour history. Your thoughts, sir. <laughs> it, it happened in, uh, in t- 2012 at the Mayakoba. And the time before that was 1983. So, th- I mean, yes, it's tied second. There are a number that are tied second. Yeah. But it's been a while. I mean, even 2012, think about how long ago that is. That That's not a recent... This just ha- th- that's a long time ago. That's so- that was the most recent. Maya Koba, John Hub beat Robert Allenby. Here's my favorite one, the only one longer, Greg. The 1949 Motor City Open, in which they said, "You know what? Co-winners, we're done here. We're not playing any longer." <laughs> yeah, we all remember how that turned out. I mean, can you imagine today if they just said co-winners? Oh my god, this has gone on too long. I mean, mon- you would think in 1946. Going to Monday would be an option, right? I mean, you don't have the TV things to deal with. You 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 probably don't have the mass amounts of spectators. The only (laughs) thing you'd save would be somebody diving at the hole for the ball after (laughs) after the win. No, down on the the crowd control. (laughs) All of these guys had to go back to their day jobs, like carpenters and like no golf pros. They had to go give lessons. Listen, I I I got a full I got a full book tomorrow. Yeah. We got, I got to end Monday. this now. Um, so it, it was simultaneously incredibly boring. And I only say that because the first seven holes, both guys made par, but that does not even remotely begin to tell the story. Uh, the back and forth between Kramer Hickok and Harris English. I mean, to even get into a playoff or to even post 13 under Harris English makes an unbelievable putt on 18 rolls that in. And then it seemed like no matter what, uh, I mean, Harris or or Kramer Hickok was rolling in everything, everything in these playoffs to keep it alive. I, I can't even imagine being in the grinder for two and a half hours of playoff golf 
over these putts, knowing that if you miss it, it's over. The pressure mounting. I, I just can't even imagine how well they're going to sleep tonight. But do you remember, by the way, when uh, Mark Leishman was, you, you thought he might win? Yeah. He just was, to, okay. I was <laughs> about to text you and say, Mark Leishman's about to post and win. Yeah. How about our post take, right? <laughs> that I, I had the same thought. I was thinking, no, he's not going to do it. He's not going to post. All right. He might post. But that felt like a day ago. I mean, that was so long ago when I had that thought. And I almost texted you too, Rick, because it, it was. Right after, I was like, how am I going to address I guess you got to address it right away. As soon as we talked about it, people are tweeting at me like, I think, didn't Garrick Higo, <laughs> didn't Garrick Higo post yeah, like last week? Someone yeah, just like, like, we, spent, we spent six minutes trying to think of examples and someone was in three seconds was like, oh yeah, the guy did it last week. <laughs> no, it, it, he ended up being second to last group, but it did make me think for a second, is this really that bad of a take? Anyway, so I, I definitely had my thoughts on that, which seemed like yesterday. But you get into this playoff, and you're right, Rick. All of a sudden, it is this is it. This has to go. I have to make this to go on, and nobody's leaving themselves the gimme. But the hard thing is, um, there was a putt Harris English had on 17. Kramer Hickok had, I think it was the first time on 17. Kramer Hickok ran it by significant, you know, mm-hmm. four or five feet. And Harris English now has a putt, and the question is what's your what's your attitude what's your take on this are you are you trying to make this are you trying to get it close thinking he might miss what and you you can't play that game you got to hit the best putt you can so harris gives it a great run nearly goes in but leaves himself three eight feet so now kramer makes his and now all of a sudden the pressure is flipped back to harris now harris has to make it and it's these these short sometimes they get to mid-range those six seven footers are are no gimme by any means consider at eight feet, Rick, it's 50%. Right. Right. So you leave yourself six feet and you have to make it. There's no other choice. Ma- yeah. Make it or go home um, and, and come in second place. And uh, and and that's a lot of pressure. And just the, the odds are not, hey, these guys always make that. Pressure is not the only thing. The, the numbers say they're going to miss one at one point. And yeah, exactly. neither of them really did. I mean, go, go try to win. Uh, go try to correctly guess five coin flips in a row. See how see how well you do that. It, it is not going to end particularly well for you no. more times than not. And that's that's what we were seeing uh, these guys do in playoffs by the numbers. I got to tell you, I was so incredibly impressed with Kramer Hickok all day long because oh, yeah. remember uh, this was actually a day ago, feels like a week ago. Kramer Hickok was. Uh, he was two shots clear when he got to 17 T on Saturday. I think he looked at a leaderboard, realized he was in contention, immediately bogeyed 17, immediately bogeyed 18. And I, if you would have, I was willing to bet a lot of money that he was just going to straight eject today, Greg, and we were going to see the meltdown. This moment is is too big for him. All of that good stuff. He shoots a 67, uh, birdies the 18th hole to get into the playoff, and then what he did in the playoff. I cannot describe how impressed. I was with him yeah um I, and I'm sure that he's a little disappointed with all pars but it was gutsy right and and um I agree with you Rick in our business I mean every single night after every tournament you're doing a recap of this and you're predicting that guys are going to eject guys are going to be disappear and the the reason for those predictions is nothing personal it's just it's what happens right this is what guys do when they get it under pressure they get in contention your game is really tested every area of your game is tested and if you were looking at the leaderboard last night and you thought kramer hickok was the guy um you're either lying or you're crazy because they're there or you know him and and you knew something that that we didn't because on paper that guy's not gonna win he's not gonna contend and he comes out today and makes birdie on the very first hole yeah and it kind of made me raise my eyebrows a little bit and then he sprinkles one in again on seven and I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of impressive. Um, and then after the bogey at 11, he makes birdie at 13. And now he's hanging in there. And this tournament turned into something different than a typical Travelers. It turned into hang on. And, yeah. and if you can sprinkle on a birdie, do it. And all of a sudden, he, he gets up there at 18 with a chance. And I, I didn't expect with Bubba doing what he was doing, I didn't expect Kramer Hickok to have a chance, but it was um, it was really impressive all day. Uh, if you take Harris English out of it, I would say he was the best player on the course in the afternoon, considering Mark Leishman had, had finished already. Um, Kramer Hickok played great golf today. 
Yeah, he played he played phenomenal. That is his 68th career PGA start this week, uh, coming up just shy of victory. But for a guy whose best finish on the PGA Tour uh, was a top 10 at the Bermuda last year, this is obviously huge. This is going to move him, I believe. No, I thought it was going to move him to 80. It's going to move him to 139th in the FedEx Cup standings, which of course is, you know, uh, on the correct side of the line, but dangerously close to it. You now have to assume he's feeling gotta, like, okay, Rick, I can make you a have run a point at value? You have a point value for that? Um, for this week or for for like what no, 139th that total. would be? At what, what would, what's a 139th? Because I'm not sure that's updated. Well, I'm looking at the leaderboard um, where it says what he would start at and what he would finish at. Oh, okay, okay. But I don't know how they do that. I don't know if it – because when he was in the lead, it had him moving to 80th, I believe. See, I, here's the thing. I have him uh, at 139th at 270 points. But you get 300 for second. So I think he's moving up even farther than that. So maybe he is moving up to 80th. Maybe – Maybe this leaderboard on PGA Tour.com, it doesn't it doesn't know what to do with two guys who are in the leaderboard tied Tied for first at the moment. Yeah. So maybe that'll update. Okay. So we actually think he's gonna be deeper than this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be um so if he has two seventy now, that doesn't include this week. So he will get to five seventy. Five hundred and seventy FedEx Cup points is um is significant. That's that's a lot. That's locking up your card. Um, and you're definitely moving on. Um, so let, let me just see here. I'll, I'll get over to where the standings are now. And fi- and this, again, won't include this week, but 570 points is, is inside the top. Uh, that's right around. It's inside the top 70. Right now, it would be yeah, 66. Yeah, I see where you're at. Yeah. Now, 66. that'll change a little bit because guys in the field this week will have gotten points. Right. But right. he, but but also Kramer Hickok has not gotten his points yet, so he'll get a lot more. Right, so he's okay. going to jump up there. I, I would maybe that's what where eightieth comes from. That might be the number. Um, but anyway, I mean that's a huge move. It locks up your card for the year. He's he is set in stone. He's he's playing the PGA Tour next year. So a huge huge week for him. Harris English uh, becomes another multiple time winner this season, but notably, Greg, the only player with multiple wins this year, calendar year of 2021, because he won the Tournament of Champions, an event that he probably should not have qualified for, right? Because they had to open it up to everybody to to the top 30 of the Tour Championship as well. He did not win in 2020 to get into the Tournament of Champions, and I've kind of had this take about Harris English. I think I mentioned it. Uh, last week for the U S open where he, I think the golf gods have kind of owed him a victory or two. You know, he was seventh in strokes gained total last year. If you look at all the guys around him, a lot of them were multiple time winners. Uh, you look at the, the event that he had, he hit a ceiling event at the Northern trust and DJ just chainsaws the field and wins by 10 strokes. He does get the tournament of champions win, but you're still like, well, did he really even deserve that? It's like, it's a weird situation. Now he goes out, he wins this one in an eight hole playoff and nobody can take it away from him. Yeah, they're, right. It's validation. If anything else, it's like, okay. I, If you had question... Now, the, all that being said, he still... He was in the event, and when he was in, he went out and won. Of course. We, like, if, if Ricky Fowler won the PGA Championship, and I, for one, was questioning whether or not he should have gotten in. I didn't think he was worthy of his... Um, I, I didn't like his special exemption, um, for instance. If he had won, I, I would never have taken away anything from his win because he's in. And now he performs under the pressure. When Dustin Johnson wins the FedEx Cup, but he started ahead of Xander Shoffley, he's still hitting those shots under the in, in the moment, right? He's still executing under um, with a given leaderboard, which is ultimately what winning's all about. So I do give him full credit for the Century Tournament of Champions, but I understand where you're coming from. It sits kind of funny. The guy hasn't won. He <laughs> yeah. wait, he broke a seven-year winning streak at the Century <laughs> Tournament of Champions. It's weird. It's just it's, weird. Yeah, now he, he makes of course, laugh. of course, he's going to take the money. He's going to take the points. He's going to take the victory. But this is nice. A nice little full field event. I'll tell you what. I was really impressed with. Hit, obviously him as well coming down the stretch. He makes birdie on 13. He doesn't take advantage of 15 where he actually hits a great uh, a drive. I actually think he hit an iron off the tee right in front of the green, and he doesn't get up and down for birdie. And then in that moment, Greg, I thought, 
all right, it's it's over. It was a good run for Harris English. You have to take advantage of that. It was kind of the way that he played 15 on Saturday where he hits it in the water, and I'm thinking, okay, he just played himself out of this tournament, but he backs it up, gets, gets out on 16, stuffs one close, keeps it under the hole, makes birdie there, gives it back at 17, and, of course, the official – length of his putt on 18 27 feet eight inches there were moments i thought harris english was out of this event he proved me wrong he got into the playoff and of course he wins it he the swing he made on 16 was like one i think that's the swing that i leave this event with in my yeah. mind yeah yeah exactly. Jeff's kiss. it was it was so smooth it was just so good um, and it, it was right at the flag. And as soon as he made that swing, sh the shot tracer really helps. But I said, oh, that's that's good. That's the <laughs> that's, that's the stuff right there. <laughs> that's how you that's how you become Harris English. You swing like that. And and I really I mean, I, I have uh, a lot of admiration for that golf swing and him as a player. And, you know, when you you go through some really difficult times the way that he has. And you come out, and, and even in this two-year run that he's had, where it's been very consistent, very good, after he won, he had some struggles. I think he was struggling with a bad back, but it's but it wasn't great. And all of a sudden, he, he gets healthy and rattles off a nice finish at Palmetto, third place at the U.S. Open, which, by the way, um, his total, if you add up his winged foot U.S. Open and his Torrey Pines U.S. Open is seven. Okay, fourth and third in the two U.S. Opens this okay, year. Okay, without looking, uh, could he? So if if we put both U.S. Opens together as one event, would he have won it? Because Bryson Bryson won the won Wings Foot by five or six shots, but he also melted down on Sunday. Wow, I'd have um, to look into it. I, yeah, so I don't know without <laughs> looking because you. But he's pretty close, so I know he's over par at, at the. Uh, let's see. Let me let me just see what he shot here. He I have it right here. So he shot uh, seventy. He shot three under at Tory, okay. and at winged foot he shot three over. So he's even. That's so a he's good even. Number. That's a good number to post. So I Bryson think that beats Bryson. Bryson at Tory was two eighty seven. So that would have been th uh, three over. What was it? They played a subpar seventy one. So that would have been two eighty four. So he was three over, but he was like six under at winged foot. Yeah, so right? he would have won. Okay, so he Bryson still would have won. won. Okay, all right. That's, but hey, that's a good cool exercise. Question. That's a fun yeah. little exercise. <laughs> cool question. But that, that's pretty good. You shoot even par in two U.S. Opens at winged foot and at Torrey Pines. That's uh, cool. impressive yeah. stuff. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this guy Harris English, and I look at the way he swings, and I admire that golf swing. It's beautiful. It's so good. But he's not really a ball striker. You look at what he does through his career, and the ball striking has been the inconsistent thing. But his putting and his short game has been the thing that's really been really good. Even even when he was um, having a hard time, like last year, 27th around the green, 18th putting. You go to 19 when he's struggling. I mean, he's 116th off the tee, 171st approaching the green, but he's 55th around the green, 15th strokes game putting. Go back to 18, he's top 70 in both of those, outside the top 150 in uh, off the tee and approaching the green. He's 33rd putting in 17, 46th around the green. So my point is cons he is consistently excellent or better um, around the green and putting than he is with his full swing. And he has that golf swing. It, it kind of, in a way, reminds me of Louis Oosthuizen. That's the only other guy I can think of who swings the club like that, where it, you just you wonder how he could ever miss a shot. But their real skill, their real um, separator, the reason they contend is their short game and putting. Yeah, if you would have said, um, well, I would have known this because I know what his metrics were, at least for 2020. But if you would have asked me last year, like, what does Harris English do well? I, I don't think I ever would have pinpointed his short game. And it's, no. it's very strong. Right. Very and Louis, Louis would probably be the same thing. You would never <clears throat> yep. guess Louis. Oh, Louis. Because all we ever do is talk about his his sweet swing. That is all yeah. you're ever allowed to describe Louis as. Sweet yeah. swing in Louis Ustase. That's all you're ever allowed to say. It's in our contracts, every single one right. of us. Um, the, do you have any issue that out, out of these eight playoffs hole, playoff holes, they played 18 six times? That's a good question. Um, no, I don't, because there's a very clear purpose. I know the purpose. Playoff, yeah. Right? You, you want to... Yeah. You want the tournament to end on 18. 
which I you get. wanted well, you wanted to end where all the fans and cameras and infrastructure and everybody is in place. Yeah. You wanted to end there. <laughs> you don't want to be running around the golf course with the the entire attendance, right. especially now. I mean, you're talking about limited attendance. I think they were limited to like ten thousand fans. It didn't or feel that way, man. They were rocking and rolling. They were doing the wave around eighteen. Right, but th they're all there. Like that yeah. many, you, when you have the full crowd at the 18th hole, I don't care how many people you have on property, they're all in one place. It's, it's tough. So anyway, um, I, I think that's interesting. The one thing I might change about playoffs that would make more sense to me is if they played a loop that was 10 or 1 and 18. Right, yeah. 10 or 1 and 18. You loop in 9 I would get that, but you're right, Rick. It's the it's the infrastructure, the hospitality and you, tents. Yeah, everything. and you will hear you will hear issues with you know, and, and and 18. There's been a lot of great moments at TPC River Highlands at 18. They're they're well documented, but the it, a lot of times it's driver wedge, driver wedge, driver wedge, driver wedge. You know, when you have a hole just a few holes back, 15, which is a risk reward short par four, you're going to have people clamoring for that. So I do think I I get it. I understand some 18 hole, 18th holes are better than others. This one has produced plenty of magic over the years, but I, I understand the, oh man, here here it is again, driver wedge again, driver wedge again, driver yeah, wedge. Yeah, I, I, I happen to think this is one of the better ones. Okay. It'd be, um, I, I just, I don't think guys tear it up where it's like auto birdie I, I think it's more interesting than a par five that's reachable oh for sure i would not i would not want to do a par five over and over and over again because you get you yeah. get it you hit it in the fair some guy someone's laying out they're missing the green in two i, I don't know it, it, there's an opportunity to hit a really good shot at the same time with the angle and the tee shot and the slope on the right hand side and the bunkers to the left if you get out of position it's not an easy um, it's not easy to get it close always. And there's also not like a backstop or a funnel where you mm -hmm. feel like, okay, they're going to get it close and tie for birdie again. No, that you, you see, you end up with a putting contest, which I think is a, a pretty good way to end a playoff. Okay. Pick, pick an 18th hole that if you had to have a playoff on, what would it be? I'll, I'll, I'll throw one out there. The first one that came to mind for me was 18 at quail hollow because you've got the Creek up the left it's generally a very hard hole. It's probably 500 yards or something like that. You have the danger up the left. It narrows as you as you start to pound it down there. Um, it's a very demanding hole. Uh, that was the first one that came to mind. Right. And another one along the demanding line would be 18 at Sawgrass. Yeah. Um, which is another par four that's very demanding. I think Houston uh, is very similar. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. With those 18 at, well, they moved, they moved venues. Um, but, but at the old venue, that was great. The one thing about the, um, the par four or par five or, or those par fours that we mentioned with water up the left-hand side, that hole exists all over the, it's very common. Sure. Like TPC Southwind would be another one where you have water all the way up the left-hand side. Um, and that's what I like about River Highland is there's, um, River Highlands. There's a little bit of trouble on the left, even though it ends up being a wedge, you can get a funky lie. You get a funky lie if you miss to the right, which is just, it's kind of cool. Um, maybe if it was just a little bit longer, you'd get a little, you know, if guys were hitting eight iron into that green, it might be a little more exciting than the wedge. But all in all, I, I think it's one of the better ones. I really do think it's one of the better 18 holes, considering what it's for. I'm not, it's not major championship quality. So I don't know. Do you want to see birdies or do you like seeing the, the demanding hole where guys are, you know, you're going to see a train wreck in a playoff. You want like this. I like, cause it's a birdie to, that wins. It's not a, yeah. Oh, he hit it in the water. And yeah, you're right. I, I want to see a guy make a birdie and win it. I don't want to see think, yeah. a guy hit it into the Creek. And then the other guy plays defense and just tries to make par to win it. I was just praying in this one that it, that you weren't going to see one of those yes. six footers miss. Yes. Yes. Me too. Cause that just, takes the wind out of your sails this playoff might not have happened if uh, Bubba Watson did what I think a lot of us thought he was going to do Bubba touched the solo lead uh, he was 13 under par which is of course the number that eventually got into a playoff but when he was 13 under he let's see had uh, 15 to play which is you know an easier par four or at least a risk reward par four one you can make a birdie on he bogeys 14, bogeys 
15, bogey 16, double 17, and bogey's 18. I believe, Greg, that's a full meltdown. Uh, he ends up playing his final five holes at six over and finishes T19. Yeah, um, tough. You hate to see it, I guess, is what you could say. You hate to see say it. Here. You yeah. just hate to see it. Um, there was the the shot on the whole the whole second nine was kind of disappointing but you start on 12 he had a pretty good look on 12 after a maybe not the greatest tee shot had a pretty good look still and it was a knee bend and then on 13 i don't know what he was trying to do with that um with that second shot he had five iron from 240 and i know there's that little ridge there that you can catch they were saying it was into the wind. I don't know how no. long it was playing, but what yeah. I mean, you take what twenty yards off for the um, for to catch that slope. So I, I, I mean, if that's the case, if he was really thought he could get, hit it, you know, two twenty and catch that slope and chase it down to the uh, fringe where his third shot ended up, then it it makes sense in a way. Um, but he, but if that is the case, then he missed by you know fifteen yards. So I'm not sure what the thought process was on that one. I don't know, but producer Jacob's making sure we're giving a free ad here to Audi on the, on the pop-up for CBS. There we go. There it is. Thank you, producer Jacob. So we're showing Bubba's scorecard on the YouTube version and uh, producer Jacob got caught with a pop-up ad. Um, got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills. I knew okay. it was trouble, Greg, on 14 because he hit his drive or his tee shot left and I was like, oh, that's that's not great. Then he hits his approach way left of where he was aiming. It was it was ugly. And I'm thinking, oh, man, he's he's just made bogey. This is the moment. He just made bogey pushing two balls left. Then he had to stand on 15 T, which is danger all down the left hand side and watch Russell Henley make a double. They were backed up there. I, I think this is a real thing. They were backed up there. He's watching Russ Henley chop it up make double he's thinking man don't go left here like i just did on my last two full swings and what does he do he steps up and he hits one in the water yeah um i i mean it might be worse to hit it where russell henley hit it right i mean that that is not that good brutal. up on that hill there it's really if you've never been on that property it's really steep in there where russell was so you got no shot to try to hold that green so that definitely shrinks the fairway a little bit if i hit it over the you you would think that hole is one of the reasons why Bubba can have so much success here. Because if, if you hit a fade um, up the right-hand side there into that green, there's you, you might not get it on the green, but it softens everything. And you get it to that front edge. When you can hit a draw for a right-hander or a fade for a left-hander around those early bunkers, you can get it into um, the easiest spot to play from, which is the front edge. Not, e not easy to get there. Um, and I thought that was really cool what they showed on the broadcast today of where the strokes were gained, where yeah. it plays, where you hit it off the tee. I thought that was really cool. Um, and Kyle tweeted about that, too. One of but my anyway, sorry. No, I was no, just go going to I was just going to say one of my low key favorite things of the of the day. I'm just thinking about this was Mark Leishman, who posts two hours earlier or whatever, as Harris English is coming up 18. He's out there. He's got the bag of balls. He's he's looking good. He's getting ready to go. He hears the roar from 18, and then he gets the like the nod from his caddy, and it's just like, all right, well, I'm just gonna. I'm not now. I can leave. Right? He's like I'm, literally. I'm I don't have to be. Another. I don't have to be yeah. here any longer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a it's a very strange situation to be in. Yeah. You're so early. What what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go? You don't hit balls now, but I don't want to be like Joaquin Neiman and Sergio Garcia, where you're hanging out and late to your playoff tea time. <laughs> do you oh remember God. that? By the way? so you you want to be somewhere in the middle, and it's hard to know when all these things are gonna end. So, um, yeah, that was funny. I, I agree with you. It was almost reminiscent. So he goes out. Mark Leishman shoots a uh, bogey free six under 64 and posts and waits. And it was very reminiscent of what he did for his first PGA Tour win, which was at this event where he came into the final round, six shots behind, posted, waited. And it was the second largest comeback uh, in PGA Tour history. We almost got a, a very similar feel here this, this evening. Yeah, and just for your sake and my sake, Rick, especially my sake, uh, I'm glad that didn't happen. 
because it, yeah, it would just we... have been it would have been too soon for what still might be a, a bad take a bad thought i don't know if it is yet um but it just would have been too soon you just you just don't want your maybe bad takes to be exposed immediately you just right. want them to have a little, little bit, bit of life span. Yeah. I mean, you like think about Kyle Porter's take on Justin Thomas. Now he's we got keep time. bringing it up to keep it recent. He's got time, and JT could go through a Jordan Spieth like slump, and he it could still be alive. Right. Yeah, he could go so, three and a half years without a win, and he, we could still argue that yeah. if JT gets back, he wins four times this year, four times next year. Right. Yeah. And so it's really up to us to keep that alive, keep the pressure on for that um, for that bet. But anyway, point is. It would have been too soon. So I'm glad Leishman is um, at this point forgotten and it's nothing personal against him. Speaking of keeping himself alive, Abraham answer. Oh mama. So this, there is a golf PGA tournament take to this and there is kind of a fantasy uh, take to this. So Abraham answer on Friday afternoon had a 10 foot birdie putt to make the cut. If you want to go back one shot before that, he was in the fairway bunker on 18, having to make birdie the whole, we just watched them play a million times. He was in that left bunker on 18 on Friday. He has to make birdie from there to make the cut hits it to 10 feet, rolls in the birdie putt. After that, he goes out and shoots 66, 65 to fly up the leaderboard. He not only finishes solo fourth, but if you're, considering the fantasy implications of this added an ace for good measure, all those fantasy points and was the third highest scoring golfer of the week. This is, this is what some of these guys can do. Greg, make the cut on the number, find something, go shoot two low rounds on the weekend and make that money. Abraham answer. This is what this tournament offers. It's so exciting for that reason. Cause it's not so easy where when you just make the cut, you're, you're done. You, you, there's enough challenge out there where, I mean, you're talking about 13 under winning. You could shoot pretty much everybody out there could shoot 13 under on that golf course in two rounds consecutively. Um, a lot has to go their way. They got to play well. I, I'm, I get that, but everybody is capable of it. They have the skill set to do it. You go to Torrey Pines, not everybody is capable of, of shooting that kind of score. Um, so I love that element of this golf course. And then, you also add in that the lead was, I think, eight under at, after two rounds. Um, Bubba was at, Bubba had a share of the lead on Friday night, and he was at eight under. He shot 66-66. So you're talking about um, a difference of six shots. That's it. So it's almost, in a way, it's not that surprising. It's just the sweat was a thing of beauty because it comes down to 18. He's got to make birdie and does. And there are other guys like Streelman, who I played a lot instead of answer, um, mm. and a couple of other players. Sia had a guy earlier. I can't think of who Keegan was, Bradley, who, I think he Keegan, said. Keegan, right, yeah. Keegan. Yeah, Streelman to me, I mean, it really hurt me as well. Um, and if I had just gone answer, I, I might um, – be on the beach instead of instead of here working <laughs> instead of talking to me uh I'd, real... still, I'd still be talking to you <laughs> i appreciate that real quick i mean we have we have there's still so much stuff to get to so i want to do real quick take your you know take your pick on some of these boppers here brooks kepka uh i mean shot four rounds in the 60s which i think was kind of low-key under the radar ends up finishing t5 he made some comments afterwards that it's harder for him to focus or get excited about regular events. And uh, Dustin Johnson, who lost his number one ranking last week to John Rahm, had an opportunity to get it back with a top five this week. Did not do that. Uh, finished T25. Shot a 71 on Sunday. And then the other one would have been Jason Day, who was in contention here uh, for a long time time in this event he shot back-to-back -back 70s on the weekend greg finishes t10 which probably one of his best finishes recently he might take some confidence from that any one of these big boppers you want to chat on i want to go rapid fire all three i'll give do you it. my t and then i want to hear your i want to i want you to do the same thing okay so um brooks kepka with what he just what, what he said about his focus in non majors, it affects my focus on him and my caring on him in the non. So I I don't really, um I I don't really care. We're not close enough. If this is the week before the Open. I <laughs> might I might care. It may have some real implication, but this it means nothing to me because it means nothing to him. Um and hey, it is what it is. He is a, just a, a peculiar figure in the game of golf, and he I is. don't know. 
it's amazing. I I just wish the story of Brooks was his golf because his golf story is amazing, and it's not the story, which is too bad. Jason Day, um, love his fight and his ability to kind of hang in there and his ability to just scrap out scores. That's why I think yeah. he's done really well at Torrey Pines and um, in the Farmers, and he's done well at some of these other dip, more difficult golf courses because he can – kind of scrap it out with the best of them, but he's just broken, right? The guy, he's just, he's just not healthy. And I hate to see yeah. it. it. It's so disappointing. And then you hear about his practice. He can't practice putting so much for rapid fire. He, he can't spend the time practicing That's his right. strength. It's just disappointing to me. So Brooks, I'm kind of shrugging my shoulders. Jason day. I'm a sad face emoji and Dustin Johnson. I'm, I, I am shrugging my shoulders again. I don't know what to make of this. It's disappointing. I saw some terrible putts again this week. Um, he's got to get something figured out with the putter. But at the same time, I know he's got his finger on the switch. He's about to flip it. Just when? When is he going to flip it and light the world on fire again? I, I don't know. So, anyway. That's here's, my here's my fire. rapid fire takes. I think Brooks saying he cannot focus for anything that is not a major is seemingly a flaw for a professional athlete. You've got to figure out some way to... I don't know, play well 18 times a year that are not major championships. Jason Day, love to see it. Uh, hope he has more top 10s. Confidence does not go from 0 to 100. I think a couple little small bites here and there. Maybe we can see it, but obviously the health is the concern. And then DJ, I just have um, – I have no idea. No idea what the state of his game is. Not sure he does either. I don't see the foreshadowing that I would like to see. I just I, – I think these are great results for everybody who's not named Dustin Johnson. With those rapid fire takes, uh, it is perfect timing to bring in our third man of the team. That right there, Kyle Porter, who KP, you had to do some obligations. You were on HQ. You did your CBSSports.com stuff. You are rocking and rolling, and and really, I'm uh, the, the floor is yours. We we've talked about the historic aspect. We've given kudos to to Kramer Hickok and Harris English. We talked about Abraham Answer flying up the leaderboard and Bubba Watson's meltdown. This this is. Uh, potpourri, anything you want, the floor is yours. I'd kind of like to talk about my Nelly Corda bet. Well, well, that's in the next segment, so save that take. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I, so here's what I was thinking about as I was writing. I think that – so I do this bit on Twitter, and it's stupid and whatever, but it's it's the normal sport thing, right? Like the, this is yeah. – absurd things happen in golf it's like oh it's such a normal sport you've got a <laughs> you've got a you've got a cadre of of golf carts driving down the 18th fairway they're on the playing field the band is on the field and <laughs> and, they, and they're driving players all over the court this sport is idiotic it's insane and yet it just like maybe not yet because of that some of the most unexpected canvases provide some of the best paintings. That was kind of the the theme of mm-hmm. my of my uh, column on on Sunday evening on CBSSports.com. And that's what, I, I just I thought that's what we got on Sunday. It's you're not supposed to have great tournaments the week after a major championship. It was just so weird and fun and goofy. Like they're replacing the standard bear. Sam Burns might work for us. I don't, I don't know if he's like on the payroll at CBS sports. Like it was insane. And yet it was like the most, it was like the most fun. It was so fun just to experience all that. So that's, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. How many holes would it have had to go for it to not be fun any longer? (laughs) Were we close? (laughs) We were we were getting there. We were we were yeah. We were getting there. I mean, I think nine would just, be a nice number, right? No, it's like yeah, golf related number nine. I, Jim there. Nance. I thought Nance wanted to go eighteen. He was he locked was in. ready. Yeah, Faldo was, was like, oh, get me out of here. Nance was ready to go. <laughs> but like, imagine telling yourself three weeks ago that the number three hundred and forty player in the world would make eight straight pars and it'd be the most compelling golf that you've watched all year. Yeah. Right? Like normal that's sport. such a normal sport. It's I, it's, I think my response to your, um, if I were going to heck, if I was a Kyle Porter heckler, every, every time you tweeted that, I would say, Oh, you must be new here. 
because this is yeah. what this is the game right you, you must be new here this is what happens every single week and that's why it's a funny bit but we get all this we get all this stuff in the game every week the week of the yeah. travelers the week after a major the week where it's not supposed the week where it's supposed to be an exhale and all this stuff happens so it, i mean but, but it, so the, cool the part about that is that you're not comparing it to itself you're comparing it to other sports right and that's like yes that's the bit is that you can have Kyrdek, Afi Barnrad and Brooks Kepka leading the masters together and you're like <laughs> how is how where, where what other sport would this happen in right I remember that happening like three years ago and I think that might have been the genesis of that of that little bit um so yeah I don't know man like it was just Sunday, some people were like frustrated about the playoff, and I totally understand why. It's a long, it's two hours. My wife is really frustrated about the playoff. We were doing the wife thing our, earlier. Yeah. Too. We yeah. were telling the wife, my, <laughs> my wife was melting, like she was melting on the couch. Like, this can't, they, when do they just call it? When do they my, stop? When, like, this can't my, keep happening. <laughs> my wife came out to my office. I was like, ah, they're, it's around the fifth playoff. Hall. She goes, five playoffs? <laughs> five playoffs? Playoffs. When are you going to be done? <laughs> that's the only question. That's the only yeah, and that's I don't fair, care how many holes. When are you going to be done? I, I but, don't know. But I don't know. This is what golf is like. If you covered soccer, you'd be like, "Well, I'll be done at this time, right?" Golf yeah. is. I always we'll have see to what give they the, throw on for stoppage time, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I always have to give the caveat of like, "Well, I should be done at this time. It could go to a playoff, and we could unless get there's a, a playoff. Yeah, yeah it's just." <laughs> Play out. Well, yeah. By the way, Mark spoke into existence on Saturday night. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this. And and to his to his own credit, Mark hates playoffs more than anybody, especially when he's yes. working them. But yes. he spoke this into he was like, Man, this leaderboard's looking like a playoff. He's like, it's looking like a playoff. And I'm like, Mark, don't just stop saying it. And he kept saying it, he kept saying it, and here we go, eight <laughs> holes later. <laughs> That's great. That is great. First of all, what a take what a take. Um, but uh, it's just amazingly They're, funny. Golf pros hate playoffs in general. <laughs> Anybody who's a the, golf professional. Yeah. There was somebody, Nobody. Will Gray had this on Twitter. Somebody put down, was it $8,500, Rick, on oh, a playoff? Yeah. Was that so Mark? I Did Mark do that? Maybe it was Mark. So here we go. Someone um, at a non William Hill book wagered $8,450 on there being a playoff this week. The odds were plus 350, which I'm not even sure that's good enough, right? I don't know how often mm -hmm. playoffs happen, but that doesn't feel good enough to me. And is that like a mistake? Did he it. click the wrong button? <laughs> Maybe it's supposed to be, yeah, $8 and 45 cents. And he added another zero in there. Like, I don't know. Here it is. Um, so, and it cashed for 30,000, which at the t so it was looking really, really good when Leishman posted. It was looking great for that. Then Harris English buries the 28-footer on 18, and you're like, oh, man, this guy is probably you know in, in the bathroom somewhere. And then he gets bailed out by Kramer Hickok rolling one in on 18 as well. I mean, that's a brutal, that, that's a brutal sweat. That, it, I don't know what kind of person does that. Leave, let's yeah, leave why finances would you want to? out of it. Like that is yeah. an amount that makes you uncomfortable. If, if you, I don't care how much you got. If Dustin Johnson made that bet, eight grand doesn't mean anything. But you gotta at some point feel like, what am I doing here? Right? <laughs> it's I like mean, it's like you know people who just like love betting the under. I'm like that is so boring. Why would you bet the under of any game? Like I'm not, I'm obviously not a professional gambler, but like don't bet the under. Like come on, we're trying to have some fun. Up betting a betting a playoffs like betting a tie, betting a draw, you're bet betting over a, eight grand on a playoff. Playoffs? Oh. Playoffs. Well, producer <laughs> Jacob says says it's twenty two percent odds. I'm gonna screw that. Okay. I'm I'm so, so bad at math. That's right. So 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 how many playoffs do we get? When was the last playoff we had? Do twenty two percent of events go to playoffs? No, not even close, right? One in no five, way. one in almost four. I, I don't one know. a month? No. No way. I don't know. Way less than that. I mean, we could do What's some research and figure it out. <laughs> but then, yeah, we're just, you know, <laughs> you guys talk about smart money, right? Where's the smart money sometimes? I feel like you do. I've never heard you talk about it, but I feel like you just, do. Just keep scenes. telling people that we do. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the smart money? The smart money's here. I've heard Coach talk about it. That's where I get it from, I guess. Um, there's no way betting for an event to go to a playoff is the no. smart money. No, because it's, it's not. It, 
it's not it's a it's a completely random outcome you can't there there are no well it's probably not completely random but it's it's closer to random than like doing like putting something on a player right because you can you can look at the numbers and you can figure out like how a person's trending or whatever a playoff is just like you're i mean it, it's it's way more random you're rolling you're rolling the dice flipping a coin yeah right. yeah can't can't land Morikawa at Memorial. So that was just a couple of weeks ago. Before that, was Matt Jones at Honda? Was that a playoff or did he win that outright? No, no he won. No, he won, he won by big. Like six. Yeah. yeah. He cruised. And I can't even. I'm just trying to scroll back and see the last. We time. just we we made up for all the not all the missed playoffs with eight holes today. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to yeah, do it again I, for a while. Right. The, the <laughs> eight. You guys probably talked about this, but the 18th at TPC River Highlands sounded like Cameron Indoor Arena. I mean, they were like doing it like chanting and I thought they were going to do the, you know, the thing that they do at the, at the like, when a guy's out of bounds or whatever. It was the crazy. They, the only thing they didn't have, remember when Keegan won Riviera, didn't Keegan, uh, did he win Riviera or Phil beat him at Riviera? Him and Phil were like dueled at Riviera like 10 years ago. And no way, no way Keegan won at Riviera, right? Had the Phil. I think you, I think, I think he lost to Phil. Anyways, one of them hit a putt, and this guy rolls down the hill on 18 at Riviera. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Have you seen that? It's, yeah. I thought we were going to get that at, at uh, 18 at TPC River. That hole is great. Like it's, an, I don't know if it's a great hole, but it's like the perfect okay. hole for that tournament at the at the end of it. Yeah, we that's what we, we, we were arguing. We're we're yeah, pro we were, we're pro 18 at River Island. Yeah, it's it, like. It, it's great. It's great. It's great for that event in that moment. And it's given, it's provided a ton of great memories. I mean, the speed stuff, Jim Furyk's 58, like all the different things that have happened there have been crazy. It should have been 57. He missed the, he, that was like an anticlimactic 18th hole there. He should have shot 57. Jim Furyk. Who could forget Russell Knox throwing his hat across the green when he won? That was good. A, a good hat throw, you know, a good baseball cap throw. You don't get that enough. That's like Don't the most that. Russell Knox thing ever is to throw your baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> I would. That's that's such a dangerous game to play. Then you're like kind of stuck. Like you're stuck with your exposed hat hair. Just leave the do cap on. Do you go on, pick it up? Do you go pick it up? Like what do you do? No, you, you point to, to your daddy down. and have them pick it up. <laughs> do you? Pick I was thinking up. about this. I saw Nelly win, and she like held on to her putter throughout all these celebrations. I've never played golf at any kind of competitive level. Greg, is that a like? Do you just hang on to your clubs? Do you not want to start like distributing them about the 18th green? I've won one tournament before, um, a high school event. And there were, um, I think attendance was a lot. This was pre-COVID and there were uh, zero <laughs> was allowed <it>? in attendance. <laughs> yeah. When were you in high school? <laughs> there, yeah, it was 2008, uh, the Suburban Council Championship. It's actually a pretty, I did win on, I made a hole in, my only hole in one, my only tournament win happened together. Um, that's awesome. It was the last. It was the last hole, which is it, wait. It you made a start. one on the last hole. Yeah, I, and I won by one. Now you walked I didn't know. Whoa, no whoa, 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 whoa! You was it a? Hold on. You made a one on the last hole of a tournament. To you made a walk off one. Yeah, I did. Now I didn't know <laughs> that I was winning. <laughs> How have we not talked about this? I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, it's kind of an uncomfortable thing to bring up. And nice to meet you, by the way. I've made. Uh, <laughs> I would have a name oh, tag. To win. <laughs> I'd have so, a tattoo uh, yeah. on my forehead. <laughs> I, I shot. I, I didn't think that it was going to win. I, I shot. I made this hole in one. It was a tough. I, I ended up shooting one over, and I thought there were going to somebody was going to shoot at least one under. So I thought it was a nice finish. I'm walking in because it, it's a shotgun start in a high school event. You're carrying your bag. Everybody's out there. I'm walking in back up the hill. It was the 15th hole was my last hole. And yeah. I get up there, and I you you do this thing where you look at the scoreboard, and you're scrolling down, Nate, looking down, okay. And there were there were like two kids that I thought were gonna kind of blow me out of the water, and I saw the first one. Um, his name was uh, Victor Fox. Yeah, how do you know? Because I have the newspaper article here now. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Victor Fox. I was gonna, I was gonna mess up his. Uh, wow, his this is this wow. is an amazing segment of. The other was. Uh, I should have just said, Simpson. "Oh, I know. I was there watching. I was a big fan of Suburban Council." <laughs> I guess there that. was. I guess there was a fan in attendance. 
So Victor Fox, who I think went on to play college golf, Ryan Simpson also, I think went on to play college golf, um, at a, at a decent level. Um, and I thought they were going to be under, and I saw 74, 74. I said, Whoa, I might, I might actually have won. And I, then you keep looking through and you got to look down. There's no leaderboard, right? It's just a scoreboard. It's alphabetical. So you got to look through every, everybody's score <laughs> and see if you're the lowest one. It, it was actually quite a challenge. Yeah, and here and people here are is. saying you what? Yeah, Ducharme sunk a hole in one on the fifteenth hole at Van Patten Golf Course, and also yep. finished with a round of seventy three, the best individual performance of the afternoon. Not even Bethlehem's Victor Fox or Will Baines, with rounds of seventy four and seventy five respectively, could catch Ducharme. This is this is great stuff, Greg. Yeah, it's really. Why didn't we lead like... with this? <laughs> I was, Change the uh, thumbnail, it... <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Change the thumbnail. Yes, I like it. Well, maybe we can revisit it another time. If we ever get a slow in the off season, talk about some of our favorite tournaments that we could remember. Yeah, it's un maybe. it's unfortunate that we didn't have any downtime over the last eighteen months in which yeah. we could discuss this. I know. Hey, the game of golf is quite busy. <laughs> we we were unprepared for those three months off. Uh all right, gentlemen. There is plenty more golf to talk about. We've got to talk about the women. We've got to talk about the European tour. We've got to give a one and done update. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. 1,015 days since an American woman has won a major championship. No longer. Nellie Korda gets it done in stellar fashion. She shoots a 269. That's 19 under par. KP, Lizette Salas tried to put up some resistance. Three shots back, 16 under. But everybody else, 10 under or worse. Uh, Nellie Korda goes back to back. You had her for your pick to win earlier this week. Um she was, I don't, I'm not sure I have the adjective. She was stellar. She was phenomenal. Yeah, she was awesome. She's, it's so crazy because I, I was going back and looking. I think she played her first U.S. Open or her first major maybe at 14. And what, how old did yeah, you say was, she is? It was now? 14. She's 22. She's 22. Now. That was eight years ago she played her first major. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's wild. And that, that's more prevalent, uh, I guess, probably on the, on the women's side. But, you know, I, I watched, I watched some of it on Sunday. I was kind of flipping back and forth. Uh, she made a birdie on, I think it was fifth, 14 to go up yeah. five. I tweeted Vince and she makes a double on 15 and people are tweeting at me and I'm like, listen, you don't understand how this works. Like this is not the first time I've tweeted Vince out at, at a, at a, you know, big time <laughs> tournament. So I hadn't, I had no concerns about the double coming home. She was great. She's, I mean, it's 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 really. I think it's really cool to get to world number one and win your first major. It's like it's just such a. That was. I think that's. Didn't Rory do that at uh, congressional? I Ooh. believe he did. I think uh, he did. He got yeah. to world number one at at Kiowa too when he won at Kiowa in two thousand. Maybe that. Maybe maybe that was it. But yeah, it's a big deal. And and for an American to do it for the first time since Stacy Lewis in twenty fourteen is it's it's pretty awesome. So good for Nelly. I, Sweet. I, I have. I have a Vince Carter thing I want to show you, but I need 10 seconds to walk over there and get it. So while I do that, Greg, this is his, this is her, excuse me, excuse me, eighth professional win, sixth LPGA win, first major. We talked about that two in one week. She also made two Eagles on Sunday. She eagled the par five, fifth hole and the par five, 12th. I mean, she was just absolutely rocking and rolling, uh, unstoppable. Yeah. And um, Kyle, you mentioned how she won her, uh, her, how she played in her first major at 14. It was like a month before her 15th birthday. But there's a, also with her sister, Jessica, there's a lot of pressure on her, on Nelly specifically to perform. And there's expectations. And when is she going to win a tournament? When is she going to win a major? And there's, when, when you have high expectations like that, playing as a front runner in this game is very difficult. Whether you're a highly touted amateur player, uh, highly touted college player, when, uh, um, highly recruited high school player going to college. It's very difficult to live up to those expectations. And when you see a young lady do it at the age of 22, it's extremely impressive and, um, and speaks volumes about her talent. You mentioned yeah. 22. I want to talk about that, but you guys know I get a bunch of weird stuff printed on my golf balls, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I got a little Vince. Come on. Come on. Come into, there it is. Come oh, into focus. there it is. There it is. See it? A little cartoon Vince. It's over. It's so good. Nice. So good. 
I got the uh, now we can't see Brooks you. And Bryce oh, there, we there we go. I'm back. Uh, Nelly quarter 22 ages of other women's major champs this year. KP Yuka Sasso 19, Patty Tavatanikit 21, Nelly quarter 22. Uh, th the game is young and it is very good on the women's side. Imagine being 22 and you're the oldest major, but this is what we're talking about, right? Is, is on the women's side, you start, I mean, if you're, if you're at this level, you kind of start playing majors at 15, 16, 17, right? Not everybody, yeah. but it does happen. Yeah, she, more. Was, she was 14. It almost is like, <clears throat> on a, Oh, she, it took her till 14. <laughs> this was her 26 <laughs> major championship. I mean, she played 26 Lucy, majors Lucy Lee is playing at 11. Lucy Lee played a, played a major at eleven. Yeah, my right? my my daughter will be eleven in. How old is she? Two and a half years. Is she, she ready? You think she's ready? Got time. She. I mean, we struggle to like get the do the morning routine, much less play in the A and A. You know. <laughs> But but think about think about a twenty two year old on the men's side and it being his twenty sixth major championship. Who's twenty two on the yeah. men? Matthew Wolf. Matthew Wolf playing in twenty six majors. <laughs> he's played in he's played in four, and it feels like right. really impressive, right? That that's the other thing too. She didn't just get like an, an invite once at fifteen. She's right. consistently play. She's like been playing the major circuit since then. It's yeah. so impressive. It really is. Across the pond, one Victor Hovland gets it done again, becoming the first Norwegian to win on the European Tour. He won the BMW International Open over Martin Keimer. Keimer tried to put the pressure on with a closing 64, but my goodness, Greg, Victor Hovland, uh, I guess if you take the sand out of his eye, really, really good at golf. He is... Um... He's really good. I mean, it's hard to say anything else about him. He's so impressive. He's so cool. My question to you, Rick, to throw it back to you, is how, how many different ways can Victor Hovland win with still keeping your version of the Puerto Rico curse alive? What if he like, wins the I, Open? I thought about that. It doesn't matter. It's he still has, alive. It's still alive. He can win That's anything amazing. he wants. The guy could have, he could be a Hall of Famer, and the Puerto Rico curse lives on. Correct. I wish Lee Westwood would have won the Puerto Rico Open as his PGA Tour. That would oh, be, that be that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be amazing. I thought about it. I said, "Wow, he he won again." Well, the curse is still intact. Doesn't you know? It doesn't. It only stays within. Uh, what do we determine? Continental. Oh, don't don't. I don't know if this is a we thing. <laughs> this might be a you thing. It's yeah. still. A, I mean, listen. He is um, winning all over the globe. It is only a matter of time before he officially. You know, he's cut one leg off of the curse. He will. He will <laughs> destroy it. It's just a matter of time. I. I, I just am so impressed. Again, you talk about how young the women's side is. The 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 men's side is just as good, just as young. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and this this field was actually, you know. It, especially for the week after a major in Germany, halfway across the world from, from Tory, it's pretty good. You know, it's Victor Dubuisson, Keimer. Uh, I can't remember uh, just off the top of my head who else was on that board, but it was a, it was a pretty solid field and, and uh, yeah, he was awesome. I, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, what he does the rest of the year. Cause I feel like we've kind of been under, I mean, his, his results of late have been, just consistently great for like eight straight months he's been really really good so it, it'd be cool to see him get into that uh does this win get him in the top 10 in the world uh, uh, perfect segue i i have i have them here so i was gonna make you guys i was gonna make you guys guess so you have to guess what harris english and what victor hovland are going to be on monday morning when the new OWGR comes out. Greg, you get to guess wow. on guess. Well, we just talked about Victor, so let's let's start with him. Guess on Victor Hovland's OWGR. Um, I'm gonna guess Victor Hovland moves to eighth in the world. Kyle, I'll say we could do this. I was gonna say we nine. could do this price of right. Okay, so okay, if we were doing price of right, that'd be the I had to go on. I, and I was gonna say nine anyway, so. 14th not that high what i yep. thought he was for it well i thought because he was well uh, hold on i can tell you what the uh because that's not going to be a huge winner rick's score. looking at last week's rankings oh i would never do something like that 
Here it is. Because the BMW is... Why is this not on here? Wait, how many did he move up? That's what I want to know. I'll tell you. I might have been thinking uh, like FedEx Cup. I, point I thought he was. I thought. It, <laughs> thanks, I thought he Mark. was thir- I thought I, he was thirteenth. I thought he what? was either thirteenth or fourteenth. Do I? Okay, this is from Nosferatu, who is like the OWGR guy on Twitter. Do we not? So he not won on this? the European tour, and he's and he and he um, this stays level. Maybe something. Maybe something rolled off that was big. Although I'm trying to find what the scoring be. was for this week, and it's not even it's not even listed on OWGR. It's like the event doesn't even exist. It's not like you know you could come on here, you could see the projected first first place points, you can yeah. see the strength of field. Not on here. Hmm. But he, and either is and either is the travelers. I don't know if they're maybe they're updating right now. I don't know what they're doing. But if we trust Nosferatu, yeah, we, we do. Okay, so we can I, guess I, on I Harris Englishes. Uh, Harris English, I'll go first this time. I'll say uh, twelve. No, that's too high. I'll go. I'll go thirteen. I was gonna go thirteen, but I'll go fifteen now. It was twelve. Oh, Kyle, sure. stick with your first oh. guess. Oh. <laughs> that's killer. Harris English is gonna be on the Ryder Cup team. I, I don't know if everybody's prepared for that, but he is going to be on the Ryder Cup yeah, team. I, I think I, he's gonna make it too. I, I was ready to tweet out when Kramer Hickok won, like. Okay, so he'll be a captain's pick for the Ryder Cup now. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have that conversation. It is yeah. we're obligated. To. Uh, English is up to number eight in the Ryder Cup standing, says producer Jacob. So, yeah, he's gonna be he's he's gonna be might, on the team. Might play his way on. This eight race. solid. He, eight solid. So, like we talked about this last week, I think, but there's some guys in trouble that you that will surprise you. Finau's in trouble. Webb, I think, is knocked out of the top 12 right now. Webb's yeah, played twice since April. He played the PG, he played the PGA and the US Open. He's just he's he got plays, to he's gonna play he always plays kind of a heavy summer schedule. Like he's playing this upcoming week. Well um, he had that he had that neck thing also that he withdrew yeah, from yeah. uh from Wells Fargo. Right, which is hometown. I mean, he didn't play Congaree um or Wells Fargo which were both driving distance. I heard an interview with him um, like a couple of months ago before those events and when Congaree was announced and he was excited about being able to drive all over the place. So I, I think um, I, I think the injury really did affect him and that's why he didn't play. But, he, but I bet you he'll play a lot if he's healthy. I bet you he'll play a lot kind of in bunches coming up. I think the big question that the U.S. has to answer here, we're looking at the, at the Ryder Cup list on, if you're watching on YouTube, the big question the U.S. has to answer is, what do you do with Phil? Right, because he, I don't, I, he's not, I don't think he's going to be playing at a consistent enough level that you're like, oh yeah, he's in. But do you do you leave an American major winner off the team when he won like three months ago? And he hasn't missed one since 1993. And so, it, how you answer that question is how the rest of the team will shake out, right? Because if is that, do you do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Um, well, I, I do not tend to team. agree because Phil Phil is the guy who can get to 16, 15, 16 in the points list and have a realistic chance. Um, I know right now it doesn't look like it because he didn't play great this week. He missed the cut last week, and now the PGA looks kind of like a you know a one. It, it looks like a one off, which it very it was well could be. Right. It, yeah. yeah. It likely yeah. is. It seemed, but it's seeming more and more like that. Where immediately after, it seemed like you found something. But I think we're going to realize that that happened in May, and this isn't a reward system, right? You don't. It, it's not. We're not yeah. trying to award players for accomplishments. Right? For sure, but I think that it is treated as such a little bit, right? I, like I, I, it, I agree with you. It's a little bit this like <sighs> buddies deal i i not how do you, I, it's how do you not, leave the u.s open winner off that question it gets asked every year and the answer is well how are they playing now are they are they one of the 12 best players right now ah, that that's my the the quote on the quote good news uh if you don't want phil on the team is that this goes through the bmw championship which is in 
September. So if he, for, if for two and a half more months, plays p- pretty poorly and he drops out of the top 20, it's not even much of a question anymore. If he kind of hovers yeah. in that 12 to, or that 13 through 18, it's a different story. So th- it might shake itself out. He's either going to play better and move up and maybe it's worth it because he's playing better or he's going to play poorly and it, you're not going to have to worry about it. If he's top 15, he's getting picked. Oh, I, I think that would be the cutoff. 16, I think, is a real gray area. And anything outside of 18, I think, is a no. I don't. How about this? I don't want the U.S. to go to Whistling Straits without Daniel Berger on the team. Like, I just think he's a guy that, that you, when we're looking at the list right now, he's 12th right now. Spieth's in. He's 11. Finau's in trouble. He's 10. I think Harry's going to be on it. Can't let Reed. They're on it. I, I think Berger should be on it, but then do you do you take Webb out? And if you include Phil, then do you take Webb and Fino out? Do you take? I, I mean, I don't know. There's just a lot of questions that they're going to have to answer over the next couple of months. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of good golfers who are not going to make the team. I would. I want to know what the worst ranked captain's pick ever has been. Like, well, they've usually only had what, Greg? Like three picks or four, maybe. There was a time where they had two. Um, and it recently has switched to, in a normal year, it's four now. But yeah. for a while, it was 10 guys made the team, two captain's picks. Um, and they've switched to eight and four uh, of late. So I would, maybe the last uh, three or four normal years in this normal sport have been eight and four, I think. <laughs> and, it, and it's six this year, right? Because COVID. So they, they're six. They can get you locked right. in and then six that. Yeah, six picks. Right. For the Americans. Okay. Somehow right. John Rahm is gonna is gonna notch like nine points for the European side, even though you can only play five matches. He's gonna just it's gonna be the top ten in the world going to Whistling Straits could be John Rahm at one. The next ten could be Americans, and somehow the US will still, you know, make it close. Yeah, it's, uh, Bryson and Brooks are you gonna light the whole thing on fire. <laughs> um okay, gentlemen, we have one last thing to do. That is the one and done update which we have some movement and i i can't believe i have to say this we're not starting with coach anymore uh we're starting with wow. jacob who took keegan bradley got zero dollars and we'll talk about what what coach got in a little bit but jacob you have to come on and defend yourself because uh coach has now passed you and you're in wow. the basement. uh keegan bradley confirmed not a badass <laughs> I, I thought jacob was gonna say no uh, no comment at this time <laughs> he probably should have zero dollars <laughs> from the john deere classic so uh gonna go back with my team and we're gonna we're gonna look at some things but uh you know I'm, i don't know what happened out there we definitely left some shots out there uh, we, we were hoping for an abe answer situation turn this thing around but we ended up with keegan so what can you do? But uh, on to the next. Yeah, you need a little bit of a, a little bit of a pep rally. Uh, Coach is now in one, two, three, four, five, fifth place, thanks to his Mark Leishman pick. KP Mark Leishman almost, uh, almost, almost posted and stole this thing, but he got Coach five hundred ten thousand dollars, and he will be very happy to know that he is officially on a heater. One point eight million in the last two weeks. Yeah, it's great. Wait, who did? You, oh, we had uh, Louis last week. Correct. Yeah, he, he's making it making some noise. Good look at coach. I love it. It's great. Those are two great picks. Yeah, they were. The leashman was sneaky good. Yep. Yeah, it was. Uh, KP, you are up next. You are now in fourth, uh, or I guess you were in fourth. Two hundred fifty-three thousand from Brian Harmon, who actually uh, he sniffed this thing for a second late. Let's see. Yeah, his his finishes, oh, yeah. man. Over the last two months, his finishes have been just insane. And he's doing it kind of like Jason Day did with just being the best putter in the world. Now, it's not as extended as Day's run was, but he's been, his putter's been unbelievable for the last two months. So um, I, I feel like I'm racking up all these like 200,000s and 170s, and I, I need a win. Like I need, I need a win to kind of really jump back up in that, in that mix for the, for the top spot. 
Brian Harmon got it to 11 under before he made double on 17. He salvaged one of those shots back by birdieing 18. He finished in a one, two, three, four, five way tie for fifth place. So that's what that's what $253,000 will get you. Mark is up next. He is in third. He went with Kevin Streelman and Greg. Oh boy. Mark is reeling. This is three consecutive goose eggs from the Bolton Slayer. Uh, he's got a um, web save for Wyndham, though, so I think he's all right. Who's he going to play next week at Rocket? Oh, he's playing Bryson. He already Bryson. told us he's Bryson. Yeah, he's got, it, he's got it mapped out. So I, I'm I'm a little surprised, honestly, with the Streelman pick out of Mark because he's, a, to his credit, um, he there's a layout here. And this is one that, I mean, it screams Bubba Watson. And we'll talk more about that when it's my turn. But. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Almost your turn. It is my turn. I'm in second. I'm 220,000 or so behind you, Greg. I had 16,000 from doc Redman. I'm, I am. What is, what is after running on fumes? I'm, I'm, I'm empty. I'm out of vapors. <laughs> I've got, I've got nothing out got, of gas on the I, side of the road. I've got no <laughs> ammo. I've got no ammo. I've got no bullets. I've got nothing. I'm just hunkered down. Um, in the fox, you might hole. have to, you might have to ride this, uh, ride this Kramer Hickok wave. See if he can back it up next week. He's playing next week. Ooh. Yeah, let's do it. Interesting idea. Stay hot, Greg. You're at the top. Uh, you, my friend, had yourself a little bit of a cut sweat on Friday. Kevin Streelman could not get it done for you. He had a, I want to say he had a look late in his Friday round and everybody then hopes you can turn into Abraham answer. But after opening with a 67, it was a little disappointing to see Streelman shoot a 72 on Friday, including a bogey on 15, a double on 16 and the eject button to miss the cut. See, um, everybody who you're, we're, we've said a couple times, you're hoping you're Abraham answer. Well, Abraham <laughs> answer is hoping he's Kevin Streelman, right? Because Kevin Streelman's the guy who made seven birdies in a row to win this tournament uh, a couple years back. Um, so anyway, Streelman, I thought, was a really good pick, but quite frankly, it was a panic pick, and I'm very upset with myself. The, the um, concurrent happenings of today, I would say, helped ease the pain. They, yes, you you were right. texting us hoping you wishing you had Bubba. You you said you should have taken how Bubba. I didn't play Bubba. I've been yeah. uh, Bubba has having a great year. I was very pro Bubba. I missed Monday's pod this week, and I, I would have been very pro Bubba in that. And I'm like, it's so easy. Like, you get the lead. You're in control of the horse. Get you you hit shots you can make. And I know that this is the shot. You take Bubba all day long, and I didn't. And it was just such a. It was like when you, you go to your favorite restaurant and the waiter or waitress asks you what you want and you uh, haven't quite thought about it and you just order the first thing you see that looks or a special or something. You know there's the what you go there for is sitting right there. You know what you're going to get and you just get something else and you're always wondering what if. Well, that's yeah, kind of how I feel about Bubba. Think about how bummed you'd be about his T19. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. It eases the it eases the pain a little bit. But if I yeah. took that T19, not only would I have not made zero dollars, which would have been nice, um, I would have it would, known it wouldn't have that I like made that, the right though. play. Right? It would have hurt. It would have hurt probably more. <laughs> but I would have made the right play. <laughs> yes, that's the that's the whole point. You can't. It's not outcome based. It's did you make the right decision on Tuesday? Yeah. And yeah. The right decision on Tuesday was Bubba, and I. Well, not, I very upset Str that I Struman Struman's been really good here though, and he's been I, really I, good in I, general. I know he's not a bad. Pick. Don't be he's don't be too hard the, on yourself. He was Greg. the second best pick, and I'm like Brooks Kepka. I'm not I'm not hoping to come in second. Kepka, did y'all see Kepka's quote? Yeah, we yeah. talked about it. You want you want to, you want to give us your thoughts about it? I uh, I actually don't. I mean, listen, like I get more, like I'm more locked in for majors. Like, I, I think that he gets criticized for that. And I understand what Rick's saying of like, well, this feels problematic, but I don't know. Like I, my, I have better content weeks during the U S open than I do the travelers. So no. I sort of, I, I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I don't know. 
That, that's well, my. I mean, that's the PGA my, was I mean, pretty special. For you. I, I, listen, I, I know this is not like other sports. We 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 got the whole normal sport thing. We've been talking about that the whole time. <laughs> but don't you think it would be pretty problematic if your star quarterback, uh, linebacker, whatever it is, was like, yeah, actually, I only care about three of these games a year, or in basketball, I only yeah, care or just like playoffs. in the play, which I guess is one thing. But like, because in some sports you can just get to the playoffs. I, I don't know. I just think isn't that there's the whole problem be a, in the NBA? Yeah, I guess the it NBA is. regular I mean, yeah, season, I, like that's the yeah, whole issue. True. And Brooks is that's what he, that's his whole deal. He wants to be an athlete from another sport, right? This is, he's kind of playing into like what happens in I don't know if that happens in the NFL, but or maybe it does. I don't know. I don't it, think you can get to the playoffs in the NFL unless you're that, locked in. Yeah, that for yeah. sure. The NFL has a really um I, I think that the system is solid. You also only have 16 games mm-hmm. where I mean that's that is four tournaments on the PGA Tour because you have four rounds. So it, it's it's uh, it's crazy. But at the same time, you you don't want to feel like the guys that you're watching don't care. And it takes a, it takes a little bit out to know that. I mean, it's one thing to know. Hey, all right, this guy steps up in big events. That's that's one thing. But to say that they don't necessarily care or they don't have it when you have that feeling it it takes away i don't care what brooks did this week because i know that he doesn't really care well i think i think the i think the weird part is like the effort is to like get out there to play the tournament once you're out there like you might as well be like he said that he said that he's he lacks discipline in pj tour he just goes at every flag which feels like Kind of true, but maybe like a little bit of a crutch, like because maybe if you didn't win or whatever, but like just don't just be disciplined. I don't know. Like I I, I understand the not being up, but why change your like discipline strategy? And and his argument was like, well, flags are five yards off the off the edge of the green instead of three, so I'm just. He's basically saying I'm just smarter than everybody at the majors. Essentially, is is like what he's getting at. Yeah, but like there, I don't know. A, it just he say, he says a bunch of different stuff, and I feel like sometimes it kind of runs into each other and doesn't totally add up. The one one other point I know we're uh, uh, running a, a little late here. That's but okay. if you listen to what Stuart Sink says and the the coaching, um, the the course management coaching of today, it's not that you ever play conservative or you ever play aggressive. You play the right shot at the right time, like a one and done selection. Right, you you play the best shot. You play to win the game, and and I feel like <laughs> if you're going to change your strategy, then based on the event, then there's something wrong with your strategy. But um, isn't 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 Brooks saying like he's kind of saying? Sorry, I, I just got to get this last thing. <laughs> he's saying <laughs> he's saying in PGA Tour events you have to be more aggressive. But then he's chastising himself for not being more disciplined in PGA Tour events. I think he's Isn't saying it, you have to be more conservative in majors. No, no, no. In, yeah, in regular. Yeah. You yeah. So you have to be. Work. So you have to be more aggressive in regular PGA Tour events. Right. If if that's what you believe, when I mean at the Travelers Championship two years ago, Ches Reevy um, started to play better because he was making less bogeys, not more birdies. So his strategy was to get more conservative, and he wins at Travelers, which is a birdie fest. So I don't know. I mean, me, I, I don't I, think he I knows. Know. I think he's just saying stuff. And my wife's still yelling yeah. at me about about when I'm coming in. So you're yeah. coming in right now. Here's what we're gonna do. We have plenty more to talk about. We'll be back next week. Full DFS preview on Monday. Mega preview pod on Tuesday. Round by round recaps. But for now, let me thank producer Jacob. He does all the hard work behind the scenes. That right there, that's Greg Ducharme. You can find him on Twitter at the Real GFD. That's Kyle Porter. You can find him at Kyle Porter CBS, and you can find me at Rick Run Good. We're going back to our wives. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>